Hello, I am Pat Healy, the senior writer and editor for Berkeley Online, and you are watching Berkeley Online Live. You get to ask some of the questions by using the hashtag Berkeley Online Live on any of the major social media channels. Our guest, Josh Ritter, is not only a singer, songwriter, recording artist, he is also a novelist and a painter who painted the cover of his ninth studio album, Gathering, which is out on September 22nd on Pythias Records. And without further ado, let's talk to Josh. Hello, Josh. Hi, how are you doing? Very good. So we, we mentioned the painting at the, the beginning of the uh, intro, and this is the first album cover you've painted, right? Yeah, it is. I, uh, I, I, I kind of had some in the background for my last record. But then I got the nerves right. all up there. <laughs> yeah, describe what, how the evolution of that idea from it being in the background to saying, "All right, I'm gonna really put it out there." Well, I guess it's it's it's. I think about it like the the painting and how I I, I think about it is while it's not the same as songwriting or, or prose, it's like it's it's. I, I definitely believe that every every piece of art or that you're creating during a a, a period of time is a. Uh, is important and fits uh, and, and fits within that period of time in the same way as music or, or other kinds of, of uh, creative work. And, and for that reason, it has it shares some of the same resonances as 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 the songs you're writing during that time. And I, I felt that that this was uh, that the stuff that I was painting seemed to come from the same kind of well of preoccupation or inspiration as, as the songs. And, and, and for that reason, it really seemed to fit. Now, did you always know um, that songwriting would be your chief artistic expression? Or when, when you started, were, were you thinking about maybe going forward with painting more or? No, I never, I, you know, it took me, it took me, it took me less than a second to, to realize that songs were, were my, my life. You know, it took me, it was, it was, it was like suddenly I was hearing things in the language I was meant to hear them in. It was that feeling of, oh, finally I understand something about the world. Something, something makes sense to me. Um, and with every other kind of art form that I've picked up and, and, and like, you know, worked at, I've found that, that it has a, it, you know, some of the, some of the kind of salutary effects are, are, are the same, but that, that songwriting is still my, my kind of my, it's the it's the it's the stake in the ground that that like that that I kind of find my way back to. And, and I notice with the first two singles you've released from Gathering, there is an accompanying painting. And what is the synergy there as far as were you listening to those songs over and over while painting each one, or is it just this one looks to represent this this song better than the other? Well, it it it's it's. It was, you know, mostly an aesthetic choice. I have like a bunch of, of these paintings that I had done and I didn't, uh, you know, I, I, I wasn't really sure if how to share them. You know, I kind of been like sharing them a little bit on online and on, on Instagram and stuff like that. Uh, but I, 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 I chose some of the paintings to, to put on, you know, on the record and to like, and to put out with the record because they felt like the ones that, uh, that seemed to resonate the most with the particular song, you know, but, but really the, the great, the great thing about that stuff is that when you start to mix up art forms, there's, there's, they form their own kind of language, you know, they, they, they form their own, they form their own kind of vocabulary for the person who's taking them in. You know, I find that when I, when I'm, when I'm listening to like, when I'm listening to a record or I'm like looking at like a, like a collection of photographs or something like that, that the, the kind of the language jumps out and is, 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 you know, makes sense to me in a way that would make sense in a totally different way to somebody else. So all I can do is really like, put out the stuff that I feel uh, captures the, the moment of the song the best. And how, how long have you been painting? Uh, probably about about four years now. Four years. Uh -huh. I, I, I'm, I, I took it up late. <laughs> yeah. Did, did you get into it as something that was, uh, I, I'd imagine it would be something where, well, I don't really feel like picking up the guitar right now. I'll try this or, or I guess describe what led you 
to pick up the paintbrushes. Well, yeah, it was it was a lot it was a lot about that. I'd say that like when I first started painting, I was I was living uh, I was I had moved uh, with my family upstate New York, and uh, we were living in this farmhouse out in the middle of nowhere. You know what I exactly thought I wanted. You know, which was my, my dream, well, living living in like an old farmhouse far from everything, you know, and uh, in you know, and winter is coming. That's what I wanted. And like, and and I got up there, and exactly that happened. Winter started coming in July, and, uh, and that, <laughs> I found myself indoors with we you know, and, and we had a, a, a one year old, two year old, like like age child, and 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 all, we were a long way from town, and suddenly there was a lot more. Uh, uh, you know, a lot more time to think. And sometimes that's dangerous. So I, I, uh, when I wasn't writing, uh, I was, I was, uh, I was, I was painting because it, it really, it, it, I find that it calms me down. I find that I wake up in my morning and my head is spinning. And if I don't get stuff out, it spins out of control towards the end of the day. So I get stuff done early so that I can like put a pin in it and say, listen, I, I, I maybe didn't, I didn't, I didn't, you know, I like nothing, nothing perceivable shifted in my world, but I got this thing done today that, 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 that feels right. And, uh, and I find that I really need that. Um, and, uh, and painting was something that came along at, at the exact moment I needed. I needed that feeling. Also, the great thing about painting, the great thing about doing anything, like whether it's, you know, you know, exercise or, 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 you know, like, you know, like doing marathons or like whatever it should be like that you do that you pick up because I, I like to feel that like, the, okay, there's no way I'm going to be like, I'm going to be great at this. You know, it's not going to be like something that I'm going to be like amazing at, but it's going to be something that like, that, that empties my mind out for a little while. And that like adds to my life and adds to the creativity of my own life and brings me into contact with new experiences. Um, and and that's like that's super important, I find, to 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 writing, you know, to to the songwriting, because there are whole like stretches of time when when it's not like you're not writing, but just the songs you're writing aren't 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 any good yet. Now, did did you take a class or did you just pure intuitive? I guess pursuit? I should take a class, but I but I haven't yet. <laughs> I've been having too much fun, and and I found that like you know in some ways in some ways with uh, I can't remember I think Yasha Heifetz, the the great violinist complained that he was you know he was a he was a prodigy and he 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 took lessons and and uh claimed that it messed him up forever so i've always thought about him but i always love that the uh the uh that like with with songwriting with with writing music i, I was never like classically i was trained i was a classical violinist but i never could learn how to read music and i i've never been able to and, and i find that some of those for those reasons, some of the maybe the discoveries that I make while I'm fiddling around on the on the guitar or the piano um, help me. They may be simple. They may be simple realizations in a musical theory way, but for me, the sound is just leads me off into a, a whole new world that I personally, as a as as still an amateur musician and you know an amateur painter, well, those things will. Uh, uh, those things kind of uh, sparkle forth to me in a way that that maybe if I understood them a little bit better, they wouldn't. You know, they still seem like profound mysteries. So I, I, I appreciate like I appreciate like lessons, and I believe that you can like you can learn an incredible amount. And uh, I, I love to read books about things, and you know, but but uh, but for for now, I, I, I'm just having so much fun. You know, you mentioned uh, kind of getting up in the morning and getting something done. And is that your approach to songwriting as well? Like when you do write a song, how long how long does it sit with you from the spark of inspiration to completion? Do you like to just get it all done or do you leave it alone and come back to it? I don't know that any song has ever come to me exactly the same way, you know? When it's, when it's really going good, there's the like, I feel like it's just like this kind of fine gray sand that's pouring down on my head and it's cooling and it's calming and I can, and, and it's like, like kind of like I'm standing underneath the, the sand of an hourglass. That's what it feels like. And as long as that feeling is there, like I am writing and when it's not there, I'm, I, I'm done. I like, there's no, there's no, there's no benefit in, in sitting there when it's not happening, you know? And, and I only know that through such long experience and like, and, and, and hours and hours of wasted creative time. 
because because I you know there are times when I you know when when you know when I should just be going outside I should be I should be doing something else you know that the the time isn't productive I'm not writing anything that's good you know and like and and, and the truth is that that's just some days you can write and some days you can't and 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 so uh, rather than being the type I think of person who 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 gets up in the morning and writes a song. I get up in the morning and 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 I do the things I need to do in my day. And then when 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 a phrase or a, a, a like a, a melody jump into my head, I'll I'll sit down and I'll write it down, you know. But I won't try and finish it if I don't like unless it's all there. I think there's a few songs I can remember writing all at once, but but in general, I find that 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 I write best when something accrues. You know, when I, I start the snowball rolling down the hill and then after a while it picks up its own lines and its own way of performance. And um, but but if I if I sit down and put my nose to the grindstone every day, it doesn't seem to work out as well for me. And I, I find that I care a little less about what I'm working on. It's interesting. You mentioned like, you know, getting things from, uh, you know, going outside into the world and like something from the world coming in. And I think there's one of the songs on the new album it's called um which one is it uh strangers where it's like i I can't believe we were ever strangers and you know you're also known for the line that the beginning of kathleen where it's like all the girls what what is it all the girls are stars and you're the northern lights yeah that's right those those feel like um the kind of lines that i I guess where where did where do they come from are are they something that you've heard, overheard, or that you've said to you know your significant other, or I, I guess how how do those things find a home? There's there's like some 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 lines which are are like which are are kind of the seed of a, of the pearl of the song. You know, some some lines are. Are important and, and, and they're important especially because they are the ones that jump into your head you know all the other girls here are stars you're the northern lights that's like a line that that man I I wish I wish I'd thought to use that you know on a girl <laughs> they, they never it never occurred to me and uh, and so uh, so when when it jumps into your head there's like it there's there's a reason why it's there and 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 something like I can't believe that we were ever strangers just feels like a solid, a solid, uh, um, a solid foundation to build a song on. Like you know, like like I find that oftentimes that the things that that make uh, a song less powerful is that it's more complicated. You know, and like and and in a song that starts off, and that's why like some of these old country songs are classics because they start off with a, a, a with a with a with a, a with a thesis statement like I saw the light like the Hank Williams song it's like it's a super simple thesis he saw the light he's had this this conversion he was a bad guy but now he's good and he's like changing his ways it's like it doesn't need to get complicated it's just that one line and then you 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 kind of take that one line that you've been delivered somehow you know this that's made its way into your mind and then you kind of uh, unwrap it like an envelope you just open it up and some the whole song is inside that line so 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 i i never like really pick up stuff from like i love that kind of that kind of tradition and the like the the tradition I've heard of like Harlan Howard and all these like country writers who are like sitting in the bar and you hear somebody down the line saying like well you know like you know whatever it should be and like you 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 know my my dog left me my girlfriend left me you know my everything you know and turn that into a song but for me I I find that it's best that if I'm sitting or doing stuff in my day this the the words kind of just jump into my head you know um song called temptation of adam uh, um you know um if this was a cold war we could keep each other warm it kind of came into my head as like as this funny uh and, and not very successful kind of pickup line and I, I thought, yeah so you've you've never used these as pickup lines ever i hope they work for somebody <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So we're we're about at the halfway point, and we have a little segment we call "Stuck in the Middle," where uh, you you talk to me about a song that is incomplete and why you have left it alone and what 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 you're struggling with. Sure. Wow. I've got like I've got I've got 
lots of songs which are incomplete and like and, and either they're not you know and, and i'd say the majority of songs are incomplete like and, and mostly those are because they're just not very good you know the um kind of they've been for whatever reason they they haven't felt as if they have the thing you know like i i i picture a song as being the kind of you you're you're if this makes sense in a, in a dark landscape and you have a fire and you need to go somewhere else and you have to carry that fire to somewhere else. You have to like carry a burning brand to the, to the next, to the next place where you're going to start, start your fire. And, and so each song is like, is you're carrying a little bit of that original fire with you. And, and, and the songs that don't have it, the songs where that, that fire goes out, they're just, not right they're just not there they're just not made right they they um there's no sense in keeping them uh that being said that there are some some ideas which which despite every like try to get them to cram them into something they'll never like fit and and those ones are ones that are just they're just waiting around to become the really good stuff those like so i have a song now which i'm working on which is uh which i've i've had the 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 couple phrases in my head for maybe four years and and there's they just there's just no, you know there's no song for them yet and and maybe there's a spot for them in my own stuff or maybe if i'm co-writing with somebody else it'll end up there but like but but maybe in 20 years i'll have a, i'll have it you know and but in my mind they're, they're always just kind of hanging out there but yeah there's that's the that's that's like uh, it's a perilous place for a song to be because most likely it'll get rejected and not used for anything. But on occasion, there's like a, a there's there's something there that just can't be like let go of. That's interesting. All right, so we have some uh, questions here that have been coming in from uh, people online. Here's a good one from Charlotte Daniels. What is better, general lyrics that a lot of people can relate to, or specific lyrics that are more poetic and interesting? I think that's a it's that's a good question. That's a, and that's a line you got to walk on your own. I'd say that the that uh, that that really the idea that we can write for other people is is sort of a is sort of a is kind of a it's kind of a rabbit hole. You know, all you can really do is write for yourself. But it's like there's nothing there's there's nothing you know. Uh, there, there's all kinds of ways that you can that you can uh, that you can structure a song and, and write what it's about and all these things that, that that will bring people in. But unless you're like singing something that really truly entertains you, then no one else is going to care. Like that, songs are songs. Songs should be songs. The, the song should be as as uh as obtuse or as open-ended as as you feel they need to be you know um i personally feel that you should be able to say things clearly on a song like like you know whatever it should be whether it's just uh, you know i love you or or like i love you but you know it's it's uh but it's not going to work out or or like or or the people that are running our country are 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 you know are are driving me crazy you know <laughs> it, it <should laughs> I, I was wondering what adjective you were going to come up with <laughs> all kinds of stuff you could think of there but like uh but but yeah like write write for yourself because nobody else is gonna like they're, they're, you're the only audience that really matters and people really want to hear what you have to say you know not what you think they're gonna want to hear there's enough of that stuff now along those same lines where you said uh to be obtuse or to uh to disclose information, this is a question from Wendy Kozak Wilkes. Is the curse in the song "The Curse" that the mummy has to watch people he loves die, or is it there's the curse that he sucks the life force out of them? That's a good question, and like one that I've like thought about about um, because the curse is a story about uh, a an archaeologist who finds a mummy who who and this mummy is like kind of comes back to life and 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 the two of them kind of have these adventures meanwhile the archaeologist the whole time is sort of wasting away as the mummy gets stronger and and 
I, I thought about that as a way of like talking about how, how, how there can be these imbalances in relationships and the mummy's curse felt like a, a really fun way to talk about that. I, I personally think that the mummy is like, is like a willing, a willing participant in this like life draining, uh, exercise but but it could be that the mummy doesn't you know it's not the mummy's fault like i i, I like though that the that the 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 little malicious side of me thinks that the mummy knows you know the mean the means part of me <laughs> uh, here's one from stephen kellogg have you have you ever played with stephen kellogg you know stephen kellogg right yeah we have a great time that's great so he says uh josh when you write how do you decide what parts of yourself to let through and what to hold back in terms of overt personal beliefs? These days, that's that's like, and I mean, I know that Stephen like has has his own ways of, of of doing that, which I think are really cool and awesome. Like, and for me, I feel that that that's that's a line you walk really, uh, you know, tenderly. Like, but but but, and and is always being renegotiated. But but really. I find that writing comes from not a a, uh, a a moment of like thinking about something, as opposed to a moment of being obsessed with it, with the idea. And and when you're when you're when you have things that you really care about and things that you're like that that matter to you, they are what make you. And like and to to write as if those things don't exist is to efface yourself. You know, and and then you're then then you're not really like, you know, you're not really a, an artist anymore. You're just you're just creating, you know, blanks. Like you gotta in the end, you've gotta say something. You know, like big songs, big songs can be about little things, and little songs can be about big things. And there, but like, but but really, in the end, the 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 only thing that 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 really comes out is that you have to put a foot forward and talk about stuff. And I think these days, you know, especially that, that's, that's, that's becoming not necessarily more important, but more evident. Yeah. What, what do you think is the most, uh, the most personal thing you've ever written and recorded? That's interesting. Well, like the beast in its tracks was a record all about, um, which, which was, I, I personally don't write a lot of autobiography, but that was an autobiographical record about getting a divorce. And that was like, and that was like, that was something that I, I was, I, I, I were, you know, I, I spent a lot of time trying to get right and trying to say exactly what I meant, um, kind of as bravely as I could. So that, so that like it would, you know, if I, if I felt like if I said that right, if I, if I described my feelings right, then it would be, that's the only way that the, the uh, the whole experience would be redeemable, <laughs> and uh, and 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 hopefully if I described it right, that it would also be relatable to other people. I'd say that there are songs like uh, "When Will I Be Changed" and uh, "Dreams" on this record, which are very personal, and uh, which are you know, but you know, you can't you know, writing a song is like going going to a party you know it's like it, it it's it you know you you want to you want to you want to show up when it's happening and you don't want to be the last one to leave you kind of want to have like so so as much as like you're describing you have to you have to be able to uh to go in and paint a portrait of the thing and then and then go then leave you know you you, you can you can you can tackle big issues in more than one song you but like i find that a lot of times they can get very complicated and like, you know, I, I, I let my beliefs out in my music, but, but I try and keep, keep, uh, keep them in, you know, I, I can I try and keep them, uh, describable. Here's something we, uh, touched upon a little bit before, but this, uh, gentleman, Dave Polis makes a really good point. Uh, you know, how do you know when a song is done? And, and he mentions, uh, listening to, uh, some of the home recordings from the Sermon on the Rocks album with his son, and uh, just just a line like um, Jesus, what what is it? Jesus, Jesus, uh, Jesus hates those high school dances. Changing it to Jesus hates your high school dances. Like I guess describe describe that kind of completion, the 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 tweaking and the completion. Oh yeah, that's like that is like one of the most fun parts for me. Is that I think it's about it's like it's like a rock tumbler. You get like you put the rocks in and they tumble and tumble and, and and you think they're done 
and you take them out. This is what I did when I was with my grandfather when I was little. And you you put them, put these rocks in there for a couple months, and these rocks spin around in this kind of a barrel, and they polish. And and really at the very end, there's these last little bits that are that of a song that that need to get polished, and and they can be they can be. Uh, they can be just syllables, you know, they can be just like Jesus hates your high school dances felt more immediate and more real and more coming through the speakers than Jesus hates those high school dances because, but, uh, but, uh, we know that Jeff Sessions hates them more than anybody else. So, we're... <laughs> <laughs> right. um, here's one from, uh, Mimi Kitch, Mimi Kitch. Uh, what do you value most in a creative piece of work? Is it the meaning behind it? The, co- the cohesiveness of the piece? Or does it depend on what the work is? I admire, and this is something that has taken me time to like come to. But I would say that when you, you know, as 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 we all are, when we're confronted with a new piece of work, like a art, artistically, whatever type of whatever type of work it should be, like I feel like the 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 way to approach it is is to approach it with like and and meet it on the spirit that it was offered in. And, and it oftentimes I find that, that the thing that sets great art aside from, from, from the rest is its bravery, you know, and its vulnerability, you know, the, the, vul- the, the, that, that, you know, you, you have to, you have to, you have to really put it out there. You have to like, you know, it, it, it may not be, it may not be like what you thought it was going to be. And it may not be what other people would call perfect or, 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 any, or, or even good. But if you're putting it out there as, as, uh, you know, then you're being brave and, and bravery, I think is, 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 is actually pretty easy to see when you're, when you're looking at a piece of art or listening to it or, or reading it. So I'd say bravery, you know, being brave is the, uh, with your work is, is like, is, 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 is really hard, but really good. And I find that it's made my life appreciating other people's art, um, richer because it makes it easier. I can say, wow, that is a brave piece of writing you did. You know, I can, it's, I don't understand it yet. I don't get it yet. It made me take me time, but but uh, it's clear that that what came out was was done with intention and and heart. And, and what what do you think the bravest thing you've written is? I think to put out. A, I mean, this is not a hedge. I would say that the, I would say to put out anything on, on on a record and release anything is is like when you get to the point that that is that that's what you want to like. You want people to hear. That's you know that there's there's been a lot of work that's gone up to that point and a lot of decisions about you know what is good of your stuff and what isn't you know what and you, you know sometimes that stuff so I think for instance there's a song like this song dreams on my new record was like was one where it didn't make a lot of sense to me at the beginning and it didn't and it didn't fit what I was thinking of in terms of the rest the rest of the record and it wasn't like a uh, uh, something that, that made, that made complete sense to me, but like, but I made me, but I, but I realized that it, there's something there and I had to like follow it and I had, and, and, and I had to share it. Um, that's brave, braver, but I'd say that one, when, when, it, when it comes to like standing on stage and delivering those songs, you know, that, 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 that you have to be, you have to be, uh, very, comfortable with your vulnerability there you're saying something that like you know it it can be easily dismissed you know people you know you can you can you can be uh playing your song and people can be walking out of the theater going to the bathroom buying a beer getting in an argument with each other like who knows what you know easily ignoring you you've just got to be able to go out and deliver the thing that you believe uh, you know, absolutely with conviction. And I think that that's, that's, that's how you approach, you know, writing songs too. I guess we got one more question and this is coming from Matt Wheeler. So we go from the, the bravest question, the bravest thing you've written to the worst thing you've written. <laughs> he oh, asks, man. what would you say is the worst song that you've written? What lessons have you learned from working through the subpar songs to get to the really good stuff? Well, yeah, like that's, Oh man, and I think that's a really good question because I, you know, and I, I have never been more embarrassed than I have been sitting by myself in my own room, you know, going back over something that I thought was really good. Like, 
you know, a flash of inspiration. And then I'd set up writing feverishly. This is how it's done. This is how it's all going to, this is it. This is this, this song is like one of the ones, this is a monster. I've been waiting for it. And then in the morning you're, you, 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 you come back to it and you just think, what, what compelled me like to, to think that this was good. And, uh, and that happens to such a degree that it's like, it, it just becomes background noise. You know, the, the primary, the primary, uh, the default setting for, for writing is, 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 is failure to get what you want. And I think that like, um, but, but as Jay Z says, it isn't a loss, it's a lesson. So, you know, there's, there's always, there's always something in those, in those, those things that you're, those, those, those things that you, you work on that don't, that don't work out that, that will lead you somewhere. Oftentimes I think about these failures as, as, as the moment when you're pulling together the granite, you're, you're cutting this, the, the, you're cutting the block of granite. You got this huge, big, huge piece of rock and, and all those like songs that never went anywhere, all those things, that's just part of the stuff you're chipping away until you get to the, to the real songs. And the real songs are in there. There may be like, there may be, uh, you know, 10 of them in a hundred songs, you know, but like, but they're the, they're the statue you're trying to get to. So failure is, failure is like, is, is in terms of writing, mine as well even call it failure. You know, it's, it's something else. It's like, it's, it's just, uh, it's, it's just the road you're walking until you, until you like, until you find the things you're looking for. That's a great way to end it. Um, Thank you so much for your time, Josh. This was fun. I could sit here all day. This is great. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, let's do it all day then. All right. Marathon, <laughs> 24 hours. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me, for like putting in all these questions. I was thrilled to be asked. Thank you to Asha and Lou over at Saxon Company. Thank you to our staff here at Berkeley Online, Josh Chagani, Jesse Barkowski, uh, Kaylee Kravitz, Tim Scholl, Nora Terrell, Debbie Cavalier, Mike King, Emily McInerney, everybody, Josh Ritter. Take it easy, Josh. Later, buddy.